chapter five of Dussel, uh, Anti-Cartesian Meditations in Transmodernity, uh, chapter five is entitled Five Theses on Populism. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. The following pages take up the topic of phenomenon of populism through five theses. This phenomenon has become a current issue given the existence of Latin American governments that, with the exception of Mexico and Colombia, have elected presidents from the center-left in the latest election since the year 2000. A certain weariness of the neoliberal models applied by the elites as well as the verification by the popular masses of the negative effects of the Washington Consensus have promoted movements and the decisions judged as populist by conservative groups or interests from within Latin America or from without, that is from the United States or Europe. Okay, so notice here that his main focus is, is in left-wing, you know, uh, uh, more center left uh, populism, and and notice that he's he's writing. Um, a, I'll I'll look it up right after this in, in the next video, uh, but the date at which he's writing this is in the early two thousands, um, and and so you know he's thinking of Paulo uh, because he lived in Mexico at this time and other places throughout Latin America where the Washington consensus that he's talking about is a neoliberal policy of, of uh, putting a lot of allowing Washington consensus says it's like the Chile, uh, the miracle of Chile I put that that's sort of like the Washington consensus that's how you should operate in Latin America and other uh, underdeveloped countries is you allow Wall Street to dump a lot of cash into the country and buy up resources, manipulate pop politicians to corrupt, uh, you know, what we would call in the United States uh, payoffs and corruption and fraud um, in order to manipulate government officials so that they sell off or, or, or uh, put through laws to uh, put um, national resources on the market and then you allow Wall Street with this massive quantities of money to come in and, and take advantage of the situation and then, um, and then also force loans upon the government that then the government can't pay back because all of its resources have been appropriated by Wall Street and the country falls deeper into debt and then the, the World Trade Organization and the World Bank imposes austerity measures so that you cut public education, you cut public health care, you cut all these public services so that the population becomes more desperate, but then that's also good for Wall Street because then you can do things like set up Ford uh, auto factories in Mexico along the border between Mexico and the United States and get a much, uh, you know, a very pliable um, labor pool that you can easily exploit at low wages and, and uh, easily replace workers and, and things like that uh, because of the desperation of these populations. Um, you know, the experience with that over the decades, and especially since um, uh, strong arm dictators have become less of a thing, it becomes more and more obvious for people in Latin America that this is just a, uh, you know, a function of bourgeois liberal capitalism. Uh, and even this, you know, we're kind of talking about this new phase of capitalism that's really gone gone beyond capitalism in many ways. And so it becomes a much more apparent that this Washington consensus uh, strategy and model for Latin American countries is not good for the Latin American countries. You know, people can see what's happening. It's not as maybe uh, confused with the proxy wars of the Cold War, right? There, when the Soviet Union was around, and the United States and the Soviet Union were engaged in all these proxy wars all over the world and in Latin America, that confused things. Uh, but without that going on, 
the economic political domination by Washington and Wall Street uh, becomes much more apparent that it's it's just it's presented as development under the banner of development, but all it does is further impoverish um, the Latin American culture uh, countries. Okay, it's a it's a weird kind of neo-colonialism as as many people refer to it. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, the simplest example of this sort of thing is to look at uh, Puerto Rico, which is actually a colony of the United States. Um, we have complete control over Puerto Rico, and it just goes deeper and deeper into poverty and desperation. Uh, there's, no, there's no other party, you know, there's no other government that's that's acting against the United States management of Puerto Rico, uh, yet it's a, it's a total economic basket case. What's the problem? Is that the Washington model just doesn't work, even when it has entire free reign? 